In this video we are going to simplify square roots uh, with variables. So let's start off with uh, an example. And the example is the square root of 32 a to the 17th. Now you'll notice that not only do we have a, a whole number, a coefficient in here of 32, we also have a variable a to the 17th power. So really a big focus of this video is going to be how to deal with the variables and the exponents. Alright, so whenever you're dealing with simplifying a square root, you have to think of what your perfect squares are. So I've listed them over here. And just to emphasize where I got these, right, 1 is 1 squared, uh, 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, etc. Right? 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared. So because all of these numbers are the result of a number squared, therefore it's easy to take the square root of them. Right? The square root of 4 will be 2 and the square root of 9 will be 3. Alright, so how does this relate to variables? Alright, so let's say in red, let's start with x. Let's take x. And if I square x, what do I get? Well, that seems kind of like an easy one to start with. I get x squared. So that makes x squared a perfect square. Let's go to the next one. The next exponent up would be x squared. What if I square that? What do I get? I have to multiply these exponents, so I get x to the fourth. Okay, let's go a couple more. What if I do x to the third and I square that? What do I get? Again, you multiply the exponents, so you get x to the 6th. Let's do two more. All right, x to the 4th. What if I square that? Multiply those exponents, you get x to the 8th. Are you seeing a, a pattern here? What's my next perfect square when I'm talking about exponents? x to the 5th squared is going to be x to the 10th. Alright, so it's very different when you're dealing with exponents. The number 8 is not a perfect square because it's not in this list over here. But x to the 8th is a perfect square. So if you were dealing with something like the square root of 16x to the 16th, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the 16th would be x to the 8th. So I'm going to treat this 16 differently than this 16. All right, how do I know that? How do I know the square root of 16 is 4? Because 4 times 4 is 16. How do I know the square root of x to the 16th is x to the 8th? All right, if I would have continued this process here and done x to the 8th squared, I would multiply those exponents and I would get x to the 16th if I would have continued this list. All right, so when you're dealing with exponents, you just divide it by 2. <laughs> That's, I mean, let's just cut to the chase, right? You take the exponent and you divide it by 2. If it's a whole number, you don't divide it by 2. You take the square root of it, figure out what times itself is 16. All right, well, let's go over here and look at this guy. So we've got 32, which is not on our list of perfect squares, and we have 17, which is not divisible by 2. So what are we going to do? All right, well, first thing we're going to do is we're really going to think of this as two different problems. Okay, we're going to think of it as the square root of 32 times the square root of a to the 17th. Now, you don't have to do this. You could keep them all under the same thing, but at least in your mind, you're thinking of it as two separate problems. You're going to deal with simplifying the square root of 32 in one way, and then you're going to deal with uh, the square root of a to the 17th in another way. So let's just deal with the square root of 32 first. All right, so I'm going to look at this list, and 32 is not in my list. So the next thing I ask myself, is 32 divisible by any of these numbers in my list? And it is 16, right? 16 goes into 32. So I'm going to change 32. I'm going to split that up to 16 times 2. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing over here with the a to the 17th. And I'm going to ask myself, can I split this up into a to a power times a to a power? So one of them is a perfect square. Well, remember, when it comes to exponents, all even numbers are perfect squares. So all you want to do is go down to the next even number would be the 16th power. So then you would have to multiply that by a to the first to get a to the 17th. Okay, you see the big difference here? 
When you're dealing with a 32, you have to divide 32 by 16, but when you're dealing with a 17 exponent, you need an even exponent, so you just remove an a to the first. You just break it apart into a to the first times a to the 16th. Okay, so now we can finally take some square roots here. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of a to the 16th, just like down here, x to the 16th, was is x to the eighth. Okay, so those guys are not under the square root anymore. Now the two, the two and the a are still underneath the square root because I can't take the square root of those. So I keep, oh, my blue keeps getting lighter and lighter. I'm gonna keep the two and the a inside the square root, all right? Oh, did I change to an x? I'm sorry. Let's change that back to an A. Hopefully that wasn't confusing. I think I looked at this X over here. At least we caught it, huh? Okay, so this should be 4A to the 8th out here because we're dealing with A's. Yeah, you know, whatever. If they were X's, they'd keep them X's. All right, so that's your answer. That's it. Now let's try another one. Okay, how about this one? Maybe if you think you got the hang of it, you could pause the video and try this one. All right, so I've got a negative on the outside, 18, x to the fifth, and we want to simplify that. So if you want to pause the video and give it a try, go ahead. Okay, so let's see how we did. Remember, we're going to think of this in two separate parts. This time, I'll just keep it all under the square root. Last time I did this, I said you don't have to split it up, but you want to like think about splitting it up. Um, so I'm going to deal with the 18 first. I'm going to look at my perfect squares. Any of these numbers... Is 18 divisible by any of these numbers? Hopefully you're saying, yeah, 9. All right, good job. So 9 times 2 is 18. How do you know what to pick? Like, why didn't I do 6 times 3 to be 18? Because 6 and 3 are not perfect squares. You have to pick a perfect square so we can take the square root of it. If there's nothing that goes into 18 that's a perfect square, then you're done. Then you can't simplify it. Okay, so all you care about are the perfect squares. Don't think about the numbers that go into 18. Think about the perfect squares and then ask yourself, do they go into 18? All right, x to the fifth, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to take and reduce the exponent by 1 to make it even because we need an even number over here to take the square root of it. We get that. Okay, so what in here can I take the square root of? What are my perfect squares? Let's do a green for green light. We can take the square root. I can take the square root of 9, and I can take the square root of x to the 4th. So I'm going to do that, and when I do that, those are going to come out of the square root. So the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of x to the 4th is x squared. Remember, when you do the square roots of the exponents, you just divide it by 2. I didn't take the square root of 4. I divided it by 2, and yes, it would be the same thing in this case and this case only, okay? But really, you're dividing it by 2. All right, so this negative, don't forget this negative. He's just going to come down. It was outside the square root, so just bring it down. And then what's left in the parentheses, we'll do that in red. That stays in. You just keep it inside. Uh, did I say parentheses? What's left in the square root, you just keep it inside the square root, and that's your answer. That's it. Okay, let's try one more, just for fun. One more, just for fun. Okay, here we go. We'll put some other variables in there, too. Let's do um, square root of 320 x to the 8th y to the 19th. All right, so I would really encourage you to pause the video and try this one by yourself before I go through it. All right, so let's go through this. 320, that's a little bigger number. We need to find a perfect square that goes into 320. You might break out the calculator, but 16 times 2 is 32. So that seems promising. So how about 16 times 20? 16 times 20. Maybe you found another one another perfect square. There is another one. I believe 64 goes into 320. Let me double check. 320 divided by 64. 
Yeah, five times. Okay, so you could have done that. I'm going to do this because I'm going to think maybe you didn't think to check the 64, but I'll show you what would happen if you did it with the 64. Okay, x to the 8th, that's already a perfect square because remember to be a perfect square, the variable or the exponent on the variable just needs to be even, right? So we got that. That one's already a perfect square. I'm not going to do anything to it. If it's an even exponent, just leave it when you're doing square roots. Now, if this was a cubed root, it's a little more complicated. I'll do a cubed root video uh, after this, but for square roots, the exponent just needs to be divisible by 2. All right, y to the 19th, that's not even, so we got to change that to y to the 18th times y. See, we're not losing our y to the 19th. y to the 18th times y to the 1st is y to the 19th. We're just making it look different. Okay, where are my perfect squares? Green light my perfect squares. 16, y to the 18th and x to the 8th. So all those guys, we're going to take the square root of them. What do we got? We got square root of 16 is 4. Square root of x to the 8th is x to the 4th because I divide it by 2. Square root of y to the 18th is y to the 9th because I take the exponent and divide it by 2. And what do I have left inside? Let's see, 20 staying in and y's staying in. Well, we're not quite done with this because 20 here has a perfect square factor. That's how you know you're done. You look at what's left inside the perfect square and you kind of repeat the process. All right, does 20 have any perfect square factors? And it does. It has 4. So I need to think of this as 4 times 5. The y is done. I can't split that up. And 4 gets to come out. All right, 4 is a perfect square. So it gets to come out as a 2. Right, the square root of 4 is 2. So this 4 is going to come out as a 2. Now, when I write my final answer, I'm just going to multiply this 4 times this 2. There's a 4 already out here, these two guys right here. I'm going to multiply those together, and that's going to give me 8. And then I have x to the 4th, y to the 9th, square root of 5y, right? Because the 5y, this guy's still left in here. And that's your answer. That's it. The 5 and the y, the 5 doesn't have any perfect square... Uh, factors. As a matter of fact, it doesn't have any factors because it's prime. And the y is to the first power, so there's nothing you can do with that. Now, a second ago I said, well, you may have noticed that the square root of 320 is also 64 times 5. 320 is 64 times 5. So you might have done it this way. All right, and then you could have done the square root of 64, the square root of x to the 8th, the square root of y to the 18th, and you would have gotten the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of x to the 4th, x to the 8th is x to the 4th, and then we have our y to the 9th, just like we did before, and what's left inside now is a 5 and a y, and we would have got there a little bit faster, right? Look, same exact answer. We just got there a little bit faster. So it doesn't matter what perfect square you pick to go into 320. Sometimes there's more than one option. In this case, 64 went into 320 and so did 16. So you can do the 16 and then you'll end up having to, whatever you have left over, you'll be able to go further with it. You'll be able to break that down again. If you pick the largest perfect square, you'll get to the answer fastest. But if you pick any perfect square, you're on the right track. All right, I hope that helped uh, for simplifying with perfect squares. And as I said, if, these are, if this was a cubed root, then you're going to have to treat things a little bit differently. And we'll look at that in another video.